list as far as Promociones Dorado's most dangerous weapons. Oh, God. The tequila screwdriver. Um, Selena De Laurenta will have to consider an offer from Cesar Duran that apparently she can't refuse. Chicago. Azteca Lucha. You bring your luchadores, I'll bring mine. The promoter who wins the most luchas gets the Cesar key. And Steel chamber barbed wire surrounds the perimeter. It took something as daunting, as dangerous, as intimidating, as career shortening as War Chamber to contain this hostility. Oh, Coach Eva, a knockout shot. Holiday's down. Holiday's pinned. That does it. That's Cruel Kruger and this whole damn army of soldiers. They're fighting for their lives. They're coming for everyone and everything in MLW. matches you'll see here in MLW. Who will be the kings of Carcosa? We'll find out tonight. We'll also see Satoshi Kojima defend the MLW World Heavyweight title against Selena De La Renta's newest signee, Bad Dude Tito. Will Selena walk into Chicago in three weeks controlling the world title? That's the second half of our main event here tonight. Plus, Matt Riddle looks to continue his march up the top 10 rankings, but standing in his way, the returning Timothy Thatcher. And based on what I hear right now, that can only mean one thing. Cesar Duran is here, and it's time for Lucha Libre Excellence. El Jefe, not alone, flanked by Azteca Henchman. And something to say. gets the key that opens the door to the greatest power in Lucha Libre. Are you up for the challenge? That's the biggest of several bold Cesar Duran moves, but you know Selena De La Renta always has return fire. 
and his opponents being presented by Selena Talarenta, weighing in this evening at 176 pounds from Mexico City, Mexico, Star Junior. Star Junior, seen before once upon a time in New York, the victory over Magnus, a second generation athlete, 30 years of age, a 14 year pro, and this all lends itself to May 11th. It all lends itself to Azteca Lucha in Chicago because this is going to be a sneak preview when we have an entire night of Cesar's best opposing the top signings of Promocione Serrano. Star Junior in New York really impressed me. He has a combination of strength and speed. He is a classic luchador. And if you've never seen him wrestle before, here Tampa's in for a treat because Star Junior has a very special quality about him befitting of Promociones Dorado. You know, tempers flared in this lucha power war before we even came on the air tonight. Our cameras captured this moment ago. I'm told that Selena De La Renta's mother in a heated discussion with Cesar Duran, the hostility between both sides only grows as we're set to see Star Jr. battle virus. Virus is not just an accomplished luchador, but an accomplished trainer in Lucha Libre and actually had a hand in the training of Star Jr. And I think just that story beneath the story of this matchup, it's not just a contest. It's also the fact that you're looking at the fact that trainer, your mentor, somebody you looked up to, is now signed with what you've been told is the enemy. How does that change your point of view if you are someone like Star Jr.? Yeah, Star Jr. has a lot to think about with the drama that's just happening on the outside of the ring. We know about that, but right now he's in a fight. Virus is no joke. Not at all. A man who's been in the game for 36 years. And who's the main trainer of the CMLL school, but uh, a decorated career in his own right. 2007 uh, Ray Del Erre winner. And now you see him grounding the younger, faster star junior. And when you look at veterans in Lucha Libre, shoulders down for a moment, nice headstand, neck strength by star junior. Get out of that pinning predicament. He couldn't leverage Virus off, but able to keep his shoulders up. Those legends of Lucha are so well revered and respected. Uh, they do not slow down. They don't take a lighter schedule. They still keep up with individuals half their age and oftentimes school in a big way too. Yeah, that's a good point. You see a lot of that in Mexico. A lateral press here, only two. You see a lot of that in Mexico. These guys going for 20, 30, 40 years in the, in the game. And uh, for a young guy like Star Jr. to want to impress not only his people back in Mexico, but the MLW brass, he's going to have to do it against a veteran. And it's impossible to ignore the power brokers on the outside. Two of the, I'd say, two, the two most powerful talent agents. And check out again that next rank by Star Jr. There's Cesar Duran, a very, very uh, piercing gaze into the ring. We see Selena Del Rente in the background as well. Ernest look on her face. We charted Selena's emotional turbulence these past couple of months. She thought Cesar was gone forever, ever since he was abducted over a year ago. But ever since Cesar's been back, we have had all of the dirty laundry spilled all over the table. These two entities have been power playing one another behind the scenes for years. Yeah, politicking and power playing is right. They, they don't hide it. Everyone who watches this company, watches this sport here with us, knows these two hate each other. And, oh, they want to control that Lucha pipeline. The money, the prestige. Lucha Libre's never been more valuable. All over the world, promoters want it. Cities bid to host it. Lucha Libre is special, but only one can be at the helm. And right now, it's Virus and Star Jr. looking to manifest that for their respective employer on this particular night. As Star Jr. hits a Tijanos nicely done. And Christian, I know you love Lucha Libre as much as I do. And this just whets my appetite for what's to come May 11th as Tekka Lucha. I'm so TV. excited for Chicago. I hear the Lucha fans are second to none in the city of Chicago. I can't wait to go and see that, that Lucha war. I kick by Star Jr. I would say Chicago is one of the best pro wrestling cities regardless but especially so when you talk about Lucha Libre. 
dived in clothesline by Star Jr. into the cover two and no. Many of the luchadors who have gone on excursion here in the United States start that journey in Chicago and branch out from there. Chicago has such a respectful Lucha Libre fandom and Virus not respecting his, his star student, Star Junior, as he looks to the outside. Switcheroo and, here. Yeah, into ring number one. Keep in mind, two rings are set up here because of our incredible War Chamber main event. It's the calling and the response. You can see Azteca Lucha, the entourage of Cesar Durant switching over here to this side, getting a front row seat. Oh, drop kick by. Yeah, that landed on the button, Joe. That could do it. Virus two count only. What do you make of the decision for Selena to come out here alone? There's no Janai Kai, Rocky Romero, Jesus Rodriguez. Is she trying to make a statement without words? It shows me that she's confident. I think she knows that that's the statement she wants to give. Very confident, doesn't need an entourage. Not that Cesar Duran does, but you see Azteca Lucha going everywhere where he goes. Well, certainly Stark Jr. has been beneficial. For Promociones Dorado thus far. Virus on the tippy top. Oh, Gal Casadora to no. Man, that body scissors, that roll through. I mean, that could trap you for three if you're both on solid ground, let alone off the top turnbuckle. Yeah, you can feel the floor shake from the impact. They're in that closer ring now, ring number one. And that was a dangerous move. He hit it, but it was not able to get three. I guess the referee is just going to let it go as long as they're in a ring close enough. That's the magic of Lucha Libre. Sometimes you're going by the seat of your pants because it's so unpredictable and so difficult to constrain because these luchadors use the elements to their advantage. Sar Jr. looking to use that turnbuckle to climb up, and Virus going to match his energy. Both men now on that middle turnbuckle, about seven, eight feet from their head to the canvas. Star Jr. be getting slightly more out of those shots, but Virus just slapping Star Jr., looking to maybe uh, put his pupil back into place. This is machismo. This is what you love about Lucha. They're going to test each other up there. Star Jr. getting the better with that left hand. Yeah, Virus caught off balance. Star Jr. poised. And the Tijela scores big. Springboard double stop. Now, look at submission. Has the leg trapped and Virus has the see. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner, Scott Junior. Well, we looked at this as a pivotal night for Selena De La Renta, and certainly one notch in her belt right here and now because Star Junior is still undefeated in Major League Wrestling, and you gotta believe that bodes well for Star Jr. and for Selena De La Renta heading into May 11th, Triller TV Plus. Promociones Dorado is Lucha Libre. Selena De La Renta is Lucha. And keep in mind, Christian, this is just a preview of May 11th, Azteca Lucha, an entire night of Lucha Libre excellence with Cesar Duran and Selena De La Renta presenting their best Head to head. Well, we saw Alex Kane and AJ Francis go head to head at War Chamber on Thriller TV Plus, but the end result was far. Allegations of corrupt officiating and the unexpected visual of the Bumaye fight train leaving with AJ Francis leads to many questions. Is there truly unrest in Bumaye, or has AJ Francis played a masterful mind game? Be that as it may, speaking of corrupt people, St. Laurent and the WTF are standing by with comments. Alex Kane, you've been crying that you got screwed against AJ Francis. Like it was some sort of conspiracy. You're spinning a false narrative. All I know is we've got the belts, and tonight we defend the World Tag Team Championship against you, Alex Kane, and Mr. Thomas. You tell him, Tom. I am sick and damn tired yeah. of the Beaumaier Fight Club, the fake Fight Club. Who? Who have they ever fought? I had years fighting in the cage. This man was trained by the best coach of all time, Billy Robinson. What have you guys done? Not a damn thing. You 
you've been sitting around living off your little association with Don King, and I am sick of it. This man right here is a number one promoter in fight sports. Yeah. Not the fake Mr. Thomas and the even faker farce of a former champion. That's right, former champion. Alex Kane. So Alex Kane, cry all you want, baby, because when the night is over, we'll see who has the belts on their shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> well, the World Titan Federation enjoys the spoils of the World Tag Team titles, but there may be no solidified unit in recent memory in MLW quite like the Bumaye Fight Club. Can Bumaye block out the doubt, rebound, and become World Tag Team champions? We will find out tonight. Renegades! I'm gonna bring you that lucha that you all need. Yes, that's what I wanna hear. I want you to bring your best luchadores to my super lucha event. Cesar Duran, Celine De La Renta, the two most influential power brokers in the history of the major league, but there can only be one alpha. There can only be one leading the charge and controlling the lucha pipeline. Oh, and this is only one of the many surprises that I have yet to show you. And let's see who has the power. This is why we love Lucha Libre. This is why we love MLW. This thing is so lightning fast. I am here to play, and I'm playing a better game, because I am beating you. I'm back bigger and with more violence than ever before. MLW wrestlers have been found brutally beaten. Trust the green. Trust the green. Only clue left behind? A calling card with mysterious symbols. Truly, no one is safe. Trust you. We are preparing for the dangers and violence that will be our War Chamber main event, and it only reminds us of the chaos of the War Chamber matchup on Triller TV a few weeks ago, as the World Titan Federation fell to Kojima, Okamura, and the second gear crew with legendary Bill Alfonso Rickside. But the last word was spoken loudly and violently by Contra, who infiltrated the War Chamber and left bodies strewn all around them. Hey, Daddy, everybody's talking about Contra, but how about Bill Alfonso making his way back to MLW with Hardcore Matthew Justice, Daddy? We're the team to beat, right, Matthew Justice, Bobby, Daddy? It is good to see you. It's great to see it you, is Justice. It's so good to see you, and you came here to help us, even the odds, with MSL and the WTF, and of course... You're damn right I did. Second year laid waste to the WTF and what's next, the Contra unit. You wanna come, you wanna attack me, you wanna attack my brother Manders. Manders is badass mm -hmm. too. Well, Bill Alfonso, the manager of champions and Matthew Justice, uh, there's only one thing left for you to do, buy the ticket and take the ride Contra unit. I'm back in MLW, daddy. Introducing first, weighing in at two and one half kegs, from Tampa, Florida, Bud Heavy! Been a while since we've seen Bud Heavy here in the Major League, and I don't think much has changed about his lifestyle. He loves to drink, he loves to party, and he's got a cup following everywhere he goes. I got a chance to talk to Bud Heavy in the back. This guy's got infectious energy, charisma. People love him. I enjoyed our conversation. We'll see what he can do in the ring tonight. And his opponents, promoting this evening by St. Laurent. He weighs in at 202 pounds. Entertainment. Perfect pairing. Well, if St. Laurent needs a meal ticket, yeah, I agree. Brett Ryan Goslin 
is a lot of upside. He's unbearable to be around. He's completely self-absorbed, wants people to worship him. And right now, before the bell officially rang, BRG all over Bud Heavy into the corner. And Christian, I don't know if you could find two more diametrically opposed personalities in Major League Wrestling. As Brett promises, sweet victory, that wind up clothesline. Tampa does not like BRG, but you gotta give him his props, he's fast. And so far, he's controlled the entirety of this match. That was nasty, that could do it. That was the key to victory, wow. and that's all it took. Broadcast partner Joe Dombrowski. Brett Ryan Goslin, St. Laurent, Brett Ryan Goslin, World Titan Federation superstar as you are. These fans don't seem too fond of you, but I suppose a congratulations is in order for your what you would call sweet victory. <laughs> Estorado, the world title! Yes! yes! You know, we should celebrate. We should. What do you think? Yeah, right? I like yeah. it. How about we go on a yacht? Mm. Oh, oh, wait, maybe to the spa. Uh, you, do you want to go to Gucci instead? Mm. You know what I really want? I want you to take that pendejo, Cesar Duran, and wrap him by his balls and rip him off! <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> I mean, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I can see where Selena gets her ruthless side, like mother, like daughter, as we count down to the ultimate Lucha Power Play, May 11th on Triller TV+. Plus. Get your tickets at luchatickets.com to be part of Azteca Lucha live and in person. And Selena De Lorenzo could very well enter May 11th representing the MLW World Heavyweight Champion, Bad Dude Tito, to challenge the only two-time MLW World Champion in history, Satoshi Kojima. That's still the cup tonight.
Fight Club, a golden opportunity to get back into the championship picture. Tag team titles at stake. Alex Kane, former MLW World Champion, one of the most decorated of all time, and Mr. Thomas, six foot seven, chief fight strategist. We're gonna get Bumaye back on top. I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. You know, I couldn't miss an opportunity for WTF to put the boots to Alex Kane and Mr. Thomas. Well, I know that you're on cloud nine as well because you now have an official victory over the boat, right? Uh, well, that's the good thing is that when you come in and you decide that you want to, you know, take over Bumaye, it's like, being, like you go to prison, you got to punch the biggest guy in the mouth first day you get there. And that's exactly what I did. I took out Mr. Thomas. I took out Alex Kane. And now the people of Bumaye don't even know do they want to support A.T. Francis? Do they want to support Alex Kane? You can make your decision, but I'm going to prove why they need to step in tow, in line, June 1st at Battle Right. Well, there certainly have been a lot of seeds of doubt sown by you yourself, A.J. Francis. I want to endeavor into that. This matchup goes on. As you see a moment ago, referee Derek Martha showing the World Tag Team titles being defended by the World Titan Federation. I think many people are still surprised by your decision to join somebody like St. Laurent, but uh, it's clear money talks, isn't it? Money talks. The man called me. He said, hey, I got money to give you. Wow. <laughs> impressive even though I don't think that Alex Kane can touch me in any way That's shape or form. Money waiting to be cashed as Kane gets to uh, Christian Cole certainly I think a lot of people underrate the pure athleticism of Mr. Thomas that he brings to the table. Well yeah Mr. Thomas everyone talks about how tall he is he's near seven foot but he's got a ton of skills. We saw it when he when he wrestled you AJ I mean he came up on the short end of the stick but he was pretty impressive in that match it's just you won. Yeah ex exactly and he hit me with a Alex Kane talking to me. He needs to talk to his barber. That mohawk needs to go. <laughs> that's his problem right there. He's taking his eye off the prize. Look at him. And, and that's exactly what he deserves. Filthy Tom takes advantage. Say what you want about the World Titan Federation and their mantra, but Davy Boy Smith Jr., Filthy Tom Lawler, two of the best all-around competitors you're going to find anywhere. And certainly, there is a lot of space rented in Alex Kane's head. Uh -huh. And a lot of that stems from you, sir. When you came out and you said that I'm not sure if everybody in the Bumay Fight Club is as loyal as they seem. Now, do you have an inside source, or are you just stirring the pot? Well, that's the thing, is after I beat him, and you saw the Legion of Bumaye walk out with me, it is obvious, as clear as day, that this man needs to keep his house in order. He's worried about the wrong things. But when I take control of Bumaye after I beat him in ritual combat on June 1st, it's going to be the best day of my life. Well, certainly not a great day right now for Alex Kane. It's oh. at the hands of Davey Boy Smith Jr., so proficient in catch wrestling. And, well, you don't learn that kind of an oh. assist to catch wrestling. That is great teamwork right there. Good job. Hey, good teamwork. Oh. Great teamwork. Christian, the whole ground shook when St. Laurent ran over. Yeah. thought there was an earthquake in Tampa. He does look like a red, uh, red velvet cheesecake milkshake. Hey, Jay, I, I got to ask you, you know, people know you for the dollar. How are the dollars in the WTF? You getting paid good over there? Absolutely. The check always comes in on time. And sometimes when you take care of things like beating up Alex Kane, they pay you a double. Mm. Well, Alex Kane is certainly a threat to the World Titan Federation and a threat to anybody. I don't think anybody expected the Boomerang Fight Club movement to become as big as it was. As right now, Bill B. Tom Lauder cinching in that figure four leg lock. Certainly a victory tonight. 
World Tag Team Championships puts Bumaye back on top of the world, but Filthy Tom looking to play spoiler. And the thing is, it's cool if, they're, if he gets the tag team title because that just means when I take over Bumaye, I'm an honorary tag team champion already without having to rest in one tag team match. Would you merge Bumaye with the World Titan Federation? Uh, you know, I like to be a, more of like a silent partner in the I World see. Titan Federation and, and the face of Bumaye. Mm. I see. So you've got all your entrepreneurial ducks in a row, don't you? Absolutely. Okay. Business is booming. Well, right now, the power of Kenny Boy Smith Jr. on display. Let me ask you, AJ, you ever been suplexed like that? I've never, uh, actually the very first person to ever suplex me was when Alex Kane suplexed me in Tampa, Florida. First time in my career, wow. it, 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 it didn't feel great, and I plan to never let it happen again. Speaks to why he's a suplex assassin, but now you're seeing why Mr. Thomas is chief fight strategist, abusive yet elusive. Look at Thomas. Thomas. Jesus. What a time! Mr. Thomas scoring big! Mr. Thomas hit me harder than anyone I've ever wrestled with, and that is not a, a joke or a line, that is an actual fact. Well, certainly, uh, if, it, if it comes from you, oh, and it's crediting the Bumay Fight Club, I can certainly expect that compliment to hold its weight. But what? Mr. Thomas, oh, there's fall. no way. Tampa explodes in a reaction. Everyone knows I can do that move. Oh, oh, there's a spear by Kane. Lawler is down. And Kane soars with a tope. Oh, you worry about me. Well, wait a that's minute. That's the problem. Whoa, whoa, that's why you couldn't beat me the first time. Because you took Thomas your eyes off the problem. Lawler. Yeah, that's the problem you have. You want to fight me right now? Hold on. First of all, you need to fight your barber. This is getting ridiculous. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You are here with a mohawk in 2024. Are you crazy? I like your mouthpiece. I'll punch the mouthpiece out your mouth. Hey, say that's what you need to worry about. Oh, yeah, how about that? It's oh, chaos yeah, you do something. Side. I'm standing right and here. Thomas doesn't see it. Uh -huh. Lawler oh. with a title belt. Oh, oh guess my what? God. And Thomas just got knocked out. Guess what? Right on the belt. You should look. And on the Titan Federation still your world tag team champions oh, yeah. and we still have possession of the new world heavyweight title belt and it's gorgeous I sleep yeah. with it every night but we have all the gold we have all the power there's no reason to fight anymore court buddy come on let's bury the hatchet I'll call you in the hospital next week come on boys there's more you to win. you you, 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 you oh. have my title right you have my title Japanese. You must study Japanese, right? You must study Japanese. 
Get out of here. What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? They're coming for our titles. No chance. Where? When? Chicago. Chicago? Still to come, styles make fights when catch wrestling battles Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as the dangerous Timothy Thatcher returns to battle the pro, Matt Riddle. That matchup is on tap in just minutes, but first, we didn't expect the Brett Ryan Goslin matchup to finish quite so quickly. So while our fighters warm up and get prepared, we do have a standby matchup available recorded before we went on the air here today. Let's check out featherweight action as Zeta goes one on one with Sofia Castillo. Ladies and gentlemen, the following fight is set for one fall. Introducing first from San Jose, Costa Rica. is a seven-year pro. Before pro wrestling, she spent 12 years as a pro dancer and is actually an aerialist, which some people might uh, confuse with a trapeze artist, but she's more than a trapeze. Uh, various types of uh, metal rings and contraptions to perform and suspend herself high above the air, so she is no stranger to take a risk. And risks. her opponents, representing the World Titan Federation from Washington, D.C., It's just, it, it smells like plastic. Well, we know that Zeta has been competing for the top contendership to the Featherweight Championship. That has been won by Delmi Exo. And I know that's a sore subject of you, Selena, because of Delmi's newfound professional relationship with Cesar Duran. I don't know who is worse, Delmi or Zeta. Both of them are equally untalented. You know, maybe we should talk about the women that have titles, like Janai Kai, which uh, Zeta is never going to beat, and Delmi can't ever go anywhere near her level. Well, that's, that's very possible. Christian, what's your scouting report on Janai Kai? Is there a challenger you feel could beat her? Well, I got to tell you, Janai Kai is a killer, and I think uh, everyone who's seen her wrestle knows that. But I'm just focused on Selena De La Renta. I mean, Promociones Dorado is just taking off. Everything's been going so well for you. Thank you. Uh, certainly with that comes... Oh, look, a slap. Isn't oh. that professional? A lot of money and a lot of power always coming through Promociones Dorado and that Lucha Pipeline. But what's it going to be like May 11th in Chicago when we see the best Promociones Dorado and the best of Cesar Duran's talent go head to head? I don't know. What do you think it's going to happen? Are you going to use your brain this time or are you going to give a one of your kind of guesses, Average Joe? Okay, well, I would suggest you think it's going to be a layup for your side. Oh, well, then you finally got something right. Okay. I'm, I'm glad I've impressed you. No, I didn't say that. Well, Zeta's someone that hasn't impressed you, but certainly has proven that she's not going to go away, standing on the hair now of Sofia Castillo. Yeah, that's all she can do. Castillo trained at the sure. WXW school off of the Wild Samoan. No real moves, just trying to win cheap and dirty. Okay, well, check that out. That's a Lucha-style arm drag. All right. This is what I like about Zeta. She's got a great striking game. She's fast, but she's also precise. She gets reversed here, though, but there's something about her ability to adapt. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's great. Have you seen her Twitter? I have seen her Twitter, yeah. and she's made she's some uh, several inroads towards, well, you, Janai, and sometimes not by name, but it's clear who she's referring to. Well, she goes on Twitter demanding a title, which only proves that she's a little girl in a women's world. Right now, she's uh, taking her world to the outside, getting some space between her and Sofia Castillo. 
And Castillo's here to impress. Uh, here in her uh, first MLW appearance, wants to show out in a big way. And who knows, perhaps Castillo can insert her name in the rankings. If, oh. Cas if Castillo uh, is only this good after seven years, I don't think she's going anywhere. All right, now she's limp. Zeta, oh, put on the ropes, but still couldn't put her away. Sophia likes to affectionately call herself the Rickmaster, and uh, we'll see if she's able to rule the ring here in Major League Wrestling. Well, I'll tell you what, these women are setting the bar really low. I would suggest it's not necessarily them setting the bar low, but I will give credit, Janai Kai has set the bar so high that thus far the best challengers from the United States and Japan have not been able to conquer her. Exactly. <laughs> did you see that? Zeta did not get all the push-offs she wanted on that DDT, but traps the shoulders and Sophia kicks out. Christian, if Zeta had gotten that move flush, that may have been a different story. Yeah, she's trying to spike her head right into the canvas there, but she was unable to get the leverage she needed to really put the weight down. Training. While we have a moment here, I want to ask you, Selena, about Bad Dude Tito. This is one of the biggest, uh, strongest brutes I've seen come through MLW's doors in a long time. How did you get him signed, and what do you think about the future for Bad Dude? Well, it wasn't hard to get him signed because he has a brain. So he knows what is best for the business. He knows how to wrestle. He knows how to really get the job done. And I know that Cesar was really trying to get him. Guess what? He saw that I get things done and that I'm the person who he should sign with. Certainly it's a great time to be an active competitor in MLW with the bidding war that's gone on between Selena and Cesar Duran. But let's say that we see a clean sweep in Chicago and Azteca Lucha. Let's say Promociones Dorado runs the table. Let's not say, let's assume that okay. that's what's gonna happen. What happens to Cesar Duran after that? Will he disappear again? We'd probably ship him back to Mexico or somewhere. Let's see. Zeta. Zeta, yeah, coming now with this. A hip attack. Yeah, very unique uh, attack there. And some insult to injury. That is just crass. The thing that strikes me with that attack is that it's not just there to hurt your opponent, but it's there to embarrass them. It's there to stink. And, 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 I'm pretty sure that Sophie right now, she is about to pass out. Zeta. Since Castillo had cut the high knee. And a follow through. Got the boot. Selena, what have you learned by the scouting trip so far? I've learned absolutely nothing. I've Let's learned see. that I would have been better off in my house. You seem calm, cool, and collected right now. Some of your critics have said the past couple of months you've been a little on edge, unhinged. Is that accurate? I'm sorry, are you calling me crazy? I am not. No, I'm saying other people have said. Okay, well then don't say you've nothing. You've been a little emotional. How about you stay okay? quiet? Okay, I'm, I'm, I was wrong to bring it up. You're not emotional at all, sir. It's now, spicy in this booth. I like it. Castillo on the receiving end, the rear chin lock. Great ring positioning, and notice has the knees between the shoulder blades as well. How are Sophia to go, Christian? Yeah, she's got her held up right there. Not quite enough to make her want to tap out, but really going to put a lot of pain in the back of the neck. She cranks her back down here, the back of the neck, if shoulder Sophie, blades being attacked there. If Sophie loses to Zeta, it really says a lot about Sophie. I think Zeta's coming at this with a very uh, tenacious mindset. I think in Zeta's mind, she's got something to prove. It's about more than being a federate or somebody's bestie. Zeta wants to show what kind of competitor she is. Well, to me, Zeta looks like a wannabe wrestler. And she tries too hard. She might be better off getting a contract with Mattel, just looking pretty. Oh, my. Oh, there's a nasty, forearm. Absolutely nasty forearm there, Joe. Is it enough to follow through? Zeta to her feet, swing and a miss. Pace quick is at a collision mid ring. They both pop back up. Wow. And a double pump kick. All uh, right, fine. Fine. That was a little okay. Selena, you can say what you want about the contenders, but I think with Janai Kai having a stranglehold on this featherweight title, it's forced all the featherweights to up their game and compete at a higher level, and we're seeing Exhibit A right here. It's so funny because they're going to keep trying. They're going to keep training, and Janai is only going to get better. So no matter how hard they try, they're never, ever going to be on her level. That's the scary thing about Janai Kai. She hasn't reached her final form as a competitor yet, and when she does, 
Man, she may be uh, even more unbeatable than she is now, if that's possible. Denai is fantastic. She look at Castillo here, guys. Strike after machine. strike. I, I'm sorry to interrupt our guest here. I, I just wanted to focus on Castillo for a second. She's attacking Zeta. Zeta's in trouble here. Castillo's been on a roll for the last 25, 30 seconds of this match. <laughs> and look at this elevate Zeta down with the Zeta's Falcon Zeta's in trouble arrow. here, Joe. Into the cover, two count only. Christian, I tread lightly. Selena with a scornful look over at you and you cut her off. You yeah, I apologize. Yeah, yeah, that was very of you. As uh, Sophia looking to again put herself in those contendership rankings where they oh she got caught oh, inside Rolls cradle up. inside cradle wait shoulders reverse Satas are down see the shoulder came up there referee started the count over it, you saw it, four it counts like but it was two and two and now roll up that the rest is dumb oh just a nasty stomp on the head and that's that vicious that vicious attack from Zeta that's a cover deep but no does she not realize that that didn't work the first two times she tried Zeta got up a hair quicker and was able to utilize that. That shot to the back of the head. Sophia never saw it coming, couldn't brace herself. And Selena, I know I've asked you this before, so I apologize if I'm being redundant, but is there anything Zeta can do to impress you out here? Uh, she could quit wrestling. Yeah, I she see. could leave her boots in the middle of the ring, and I would certainly respect that. What about if she hits I'm Prettier, but countered by Sophia? <laughs> well, <laughs> Speaking of boots, oh, it that, seems right, like... that right boot lace on Castillo is untied. Could get tripped up in there, but right now she's got to worry about Zeta. Look Second at Zeta. Strike. Oh my goodness. Zeta connects with I'm Prettier, and Zeta back to her winning way. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your Whatever. winner, Zeta. Well, Zeta is looking to be the top contender, but Selena, you still control the pipeline, not just a bunch of lucha, but of that featherweight title. I I think I've seen enough. I don't have anything to say about this. I think that she got lucky. Selena, best of luck tonight as Bad Dude Tito yeah, challenges yeah. Satoshi Kojima. Okay. Goodbye. Yeah, she's okay. gone. I tried to be nice. Yeah, she's gone. I wasn't particularly surprised to hear the responses from Selena De Laurenta concerning Zeta, but what will the official response be to the calling from Akira as he trusts in Raven and leads his team into battle? Akira, Raven, Jimmy Lloyd, and Jake Chris are standing by as War Chamber draws nearer. When you fall to nothingness, when there's nothing around you, you feel no purpose, and you persevere, that is when you find your true calling. The calm before the storm. You feel that excitement in the air. You're left with nothing but your thoughts, your imagination. This is what war is like. And ever since entering MLW, the calling has been a thorn in my side. But after tonight, after the war chamber, the calling is over. I started the calling, and it was stolen from me. So now I'm gonna have to end it. And my response is, quote the Raven, nevermore. Head to betonline.ag on your desktop or phone and get started with massive welcome bonuses. Ladies and gentlemen, the following fight is set for one fall. Introducing first, weighing in this evening at 224 pounds, from Sacramento, California, Timothy Thatcher. Well, you want to talk about hard-nosed, rugged, a throwback? he was in a major league wrestling ring he didn't stop fighting until he was literally knocked unconscious this guy's got no fear he's got a jujitsu background he's got a catch 
much as catch can style. I've known Timothy Thatcher for 15 years. One of the most impressive wrestlers I've ever seen live. Tonight, Tampa gets a piece of Timothy Thatcher. Big time heavyweight tag team champion and pro wrestler like Noah, internationally renowned. But what a tough test. We say in Major League Wrestling, styles make fights. Cannot wait to see a perfect example of that mantra in just moments. And Thatcher is as ready as anybody. He loves competition. And his opponents weighing in this evening at 216 pounds from Allentown, Pennsylvania. to the striking game of Thatcher. Those knees are one of his best assets. When he throws those, they are violent and devastating. As Matt Riddle wants to start this thing off with some good sportsmanship. Christian, I think we could draw a line down the center of the screen and just feel the different energies permeating from the ring right now. It's that different, it's that intense. Look at Thatcher, wasn't giving up any space. Standing right in the center of the squared circle. Gonna go right after that right arm. The veteran Riddle searching for a bottom rope and a rope break. All right, well, Christian, let's play fight strategist. You're Timothy Thatcher. You want your name on the marquee. You want your name as a top contender. How do you solve the mystery of Matt Riddle and give him his first MLW loss? Well, I think you've got to play a psychological game a little bit as you see Thatcher just not giving up any space. So he's actually combining the psyche and the physical space of the ring. You have to attack Matt Riddle and maybe anger him. I mean, he's such a happy-go-lucky guy. Maybe upsetting Riddle would change his disposition during the fight. That double leg takeover was effective for a moment. Okay, you're Matt Riddle, and maybe you haven't faced somebody with quite the catch expertise that often as Timothy Thatcher. What do you need to do to keep your streak intact? Well, you got to remember, Riddle is a former UFC fighter. Riddle is an MMA expert. And so I would think that Riddle just relying on that part of his grappling background would work against Timothy Thatcher, but that's a remains to be seen. Riddle 4-0 in his most recent four UFC fights before leaving the organization. Former winner of the fight of the night, submission of the night. And there you see the grappling 
skills of Matt Riddle. Stay off his back, stay off his shoulders. Send Riddle down with that wind up the European uppercut and look for the single leg pick trying to take over Riddle. Beautiful Thatcher there, putting a lot of pressure on the hip and of course the hamstring. Riddle now in a bad spot. Thatcher's going to transition here. The referee sees he's got a. <laughs> That's Thatcher. I mean, he's going to do whatever it takes. To notice, get himself in a position for a victory. Notice Thatcher has not released the grip at any point. He'll shift the weight. He'll change positions. Riddle now under the rope. Thatcher has to break. But Thatcher gave Riddle no breathing room, no room for error. Just smothering his opponent. And now cautiously letting Riddle up, but never breaking eye contact. Even Christian with a clean break. Timothy Thatcher sending a message. You're starting to see an expression of frustration on Matt Riddle's face. It's what I alluded to earlier. And if you could change the disposition of Riddle and actually sort of frustrate him, it might take him off his game. And, and you know, when I hear that, Christian, to me the biggest word is if, because it's so difficult to get under Matt Riddle's skin. He's usually uh, so poised and so calm and just loving life, and he's got a very carefree vibe about him. But if Thatcher can get Riddle off of a Riddle mindset, man, that's uncharted territory. Maybe a Timmy Thatcher has an advantage and a chance to win this thing. Thatcher now putting all that pressure on the shoulders of Matt Riddle. He's got his leg all locked up. This is the thing about Thatcher. He can transition from one move to another, although that's a counter there by Riddle. Riddle able to fight out. Looks to go for his own submission. He's got Thatcher's back here. Riddle using those long limbs. That's nasty. Look at his shoulder position there. And Thatcher's sense of urgency on his face knew he had to get out. He was in trouble. Riddle. Those, those long legs enable him to just grab you and wrap you up in a split second. You don't see it coming, and you don't really have any available appendages or leverage to get out because not only is, is Riddle tall, but he's also so thick and, and, and powerful. Tessa's strength goes quickly there in the center. And big strikes. That's a nice forearm. That's in deep. Another one. Thatcher might be rocked. He's on the back of the rope there. He's back to the rope there. Ooh. Eats a kick. And Riddle is pushing forward with renewed aggression. But Thatcher better with the elbow. Hook of the leg. You see how fast Timothy Thatcher ran over to the cover. Thatcher wasting no time at all trying to get the pinfall victory. Well, it's said oftentimes uh, the sport of pro wrestling is uh, a sport of seconds and inches. And Thatcher knows that as well as anybody. I don't think Thatcher truly gets credit worldwide for what he's capable of because he does not sing his own praises. He does not love uh, to come out here and talk for long soliloquies. He does love the Fujiwara armbar, and he loves to make people suffer. Will Riddle tap away this matchup on his street? Riddle needs a couple more inches for the rope, able to get it, causing a break. We've seen a lot of submission attempts from both competitors here. Fundamental wrestling. But, you know, Christian, it's such a strange thought to picture either of these men tapping out or verbally conceding. That's a great point. Both men known for their heart and their will to win. And utilizing that, that steel guardrail, wedging Riddle's arm at his wrist as he wrenches it from one side to another. And all it takes, again, could be inches, could be seconds. You get your arm caught the wrong way. There's so many little bones in your wrist that you could break when it hits a steel surface. We're seeing the first smile tonight from Timothy Thatcher as forcing a man's arm to nearly break in the guardrails is the first thing that humored him tonight. Yeah. 
A lot of gaps in that smile, too, from missing teeth from all of his years of fights. He's been in a lot of fights. And Riddle in a bat. Oh, no. Yeah, your hand's not supposed to bend that way, Joe. I don't have to tell you. Oh, Thatcher has Riddle right where he points him and drives the bone of that knee. And that sends the wrist and the arm moving sideways. And again, I think Thatcher's trying to break those little bones and a sneer into the camera showing the world what pain being inflicted on Matt Riddle. I know this is a bold statement, Christian, because you look at the level of competition, but is this the toughest test of Matt Riddle's MLW career? It has to be. Matt Riddle, of course, undefeated here in the major leagues. But Tim Thatcher is a violent individual. You've seen him attack Riddle, but now Riddle coming back and countering. Oh, drop step has the back of Thatcher hits the knee. And that, yeah, is another knee padless competitor. Bone on bone. And follows through again. Oh, you think of. Tito, Masai, Vegeta, and, and all the athletes that Riddle has gone through. Fuck two. These men oh, brought their all. And Riddle has the cover to count only. Matt Riddle starting to look like he, he kind of knows what it's going to take to put him away. He couldn't do it there. But you could see the gears grinding. Upstairs, he's starting to think about what he needs, and it, it looks like his decision is to go high risk. Thatcher caught Riddle right in a rib cage, looking at it from the intercostals. He's looking to constrict that breathing of Matt Riddle. Everything Thatcher does is with purpose. Double underhooks, Joe. That might do it. Perfect technique. Kick out further incenses Timothy Thatcher. That was a gnarly collision in the center of the ring. Matt Riddle's back to the center of the canvas. Thatcher did not come here to be a statistic. He did not come here to pad Riddle's record. Thatcher came here to excel and play spoiler and mark his own territory. Gut wrench overhead. Look at that, Thatcher going over for the cover. Two count only, and that I mean, seamless transition. Looking for the Juji Katami Riddle with the counter as he clasps his hands together. Yeah, Riddle's able to hold his wrist. He's unable to get the entire arm bar. Is Thatcher, now he might have to just pull back. And he does, oh, look at that. Beautiful counter by Riddle. Roton. And keep in mind, Christian, Riddle used the wrist strength to try to counter that arm bar. That wrist was damaged earlier in the bout. Everything Thatcher does has a purpose. Yeah, and these guys have been going for a while now. I think some of the sweat that's accumulated actually helped an escape there. Both men struggling to their feet, but not struggling to find the will to fight. That comes naturally. impact of these shots and the outcry of these throngs of engaged fans in Tampa tell the story and so does the German suplex. Matt going up top. Look at Riddle. Riddle with a third wind. Proton go way up high. No. How? How did Timothy Thatcher kick out from the Proton? Matt Riddle may be asking the same question. The only person that might not be surprised by that kick out is Timothy Thatcher himself. And Riddle on the point of the elbow down to the side of the jaw. Looking to trap Thatcher. Thatcher rolls through. Looking arm bar once more. Fujiwara style. On cranking back with every ounce of force Thatcher has. Riddle rolls through. Comes through with the knee. And we could be a step away from the Brewstone. Riddle hooks the leg and keeps the feet alive. Here is your winner, the KO Max Riddle. They keep getting tougher. They keep getting fiercer. But Matt Riddle continues to. 
him up for Matt Riddle, and he knocks him down every single time. Matt Riddle had a tough test tonight, but he was able to edge out the victory. Still undefeated in Major League Wrestling, Matt Riddle. Let's go to Joe Dombrowski, who is ringside interviewing. Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle. Come on in here, my friend. I want to get words from you. A hard-fought victory. And, bro, you're still undefeated in Major League Wrestling. Bro. I'm back in MLW, and I'm still undefeated, baby. But, but, I've been winning titles, traveling the world, and there's still one title that eludes me, bro. And that's the MLW Heavyweight World Championship. Well, the next chance to earn a title match, it's coming up, it's Battle Riot in Atlanta. Might we see Matt Riddle involved? Two steps ahead of you, bro. Matt Riddle, the king of bros, will be in the Battle Riot this year. Check out the upcoming MLW fight calendar, of course, May 11th in Chicago, Azteca Lucha, Cesar Duran versus Promociones Dorado, led by Selena De La Renta. Catch it all on Triller TV. Then May 18th, we are back free across the world on BN Sports and YouTube with Fury Road. June 1st, we riot in Atlanta at center stage with Battle Riot 6. And what the hell is this? Contras hack the feet again. Contras hack the feet. That's Richard Holiday. Holiday's being assaulted. That damn pit fighter, Akira Kwan, he's sticking in his eyes. He's going to get out of there. Get out. is back. And I have great surprises for you all. Raven is here. Raven is assaulting the Kali. Carcosa Civil War is in front of us. The Civil War for Carcosa has begun, but I can promise you it will be anything but civil. And you're going to hell with Raven! Always an unsettling visual when the Contra logo appears. That means someone's getting hurt, and that someone just moments ago was Richard Holiday. We do understand security has been heightened even further. The arena is undergoing lockdown to prevent any further disturbances here this evening. We also heard important news from Matt Riddle as he announced officially he's entering Battle Riot. Matt Riddle's looking to finish what he started six years ago, but in order to do that, he'll have to outfight, outlast, and outthink 39 other combatants. June 1st, Atlanta, Georgia, at center stage at the Battle Riot. If he does that, he'll get a shot at the world champ. But who will walk into Battle Riot world champion? We may find out right now. Mariotto! The world is watching. Kojima! Let me out to again! Kojima finds a way! MLW World Title Fight Time. Let's look at the tail of the tape. 
Kojima's return home to MLW after 20 years has been nothing short of amazing with undeniable momentum. But will that be stunted by a force of power and ferocity named Bad Dude Tito, who has dominated the competition since linking up with Promociones Dorado? Selena De Laurenta has guided more fighters to gold in MLW than anyone in history. Is Bad Dude Tito next? And will Selena be an impact player in this title fight? We're about to find out. Tim Barr, take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, the following fight is set for one fall and is for the MLW World Heavyweight Championship. Introducing first, presented by Selena De La Renta, weighing this evening at 255 pounds from Whittier, California. and has already amassed an impressive body count here in Major League Wrestling, whether it's his brawling acumen, whether it's his power, whether it's that tequila screwdriver we've seen, Bad Dude Tito knows how to put people away. And the one-sidedness of his victories, coupled with Selena doing the negotiations in the back rooms, gets him a chance to score big. And his opponents, he's in company into the ring by Weighing in this evening at 238 pounds from Kotoko, Tokyo, Japan. He is the reigning and defending MLW World Heavyweight Champion, Satoshi Kojima. Kojima, the hero in War Chamber three weeks ago, overcoming the World Titan Federation of several victims of the insurgency known as Contra Unit, the leadership of Bad Rule Gruber, the return of Akira Kwan, the entirety of the ring draped in Contra colors. We know Kojima stepped into War Chamber, rehabbing an injured MCL in his knee. And you have to believe, between War Chamber and Contra's attack, that injury is perhaps more prevalent now than ever, but undeterred. Not making excuses, Kojima's here to defend the world title. Kojima making news earlier this year when he became a two-time MLW World Heavyweight Champion. There you see that beautiful title on the line. And this could be his biggest test against Bad Dude Tito. But, I mean, Christian, we all love the feel-good story of Kojima returning to his home away from home here in Major League Wrestling. But we got to ask the tough questions. Kojima's MCL has not been 100% for the last couple of months. We have seen him fight through world title matches. We have seen him fight through War Chamber. We've seen him injured further in a presentation of a new championship title belt that went awry. Kojima has not taken any time off from his obligations as MLW World Champion, even if it means he's been medically disqualified from some of the recent New Japan tours. Will his body cooperate, or is it time tonight that Tito makes sure his body gives out? It's unfathomable that Kojima continues to fight through this knee injury. It is a disgusting injury. Just imagine the ligaments like rubber bands just shredding and ripping in your knee. This is what Kojima has dealt with for the better part of 2024. Kojima has it taped heavily under that pad. I mean, every single step he takes, he feels like Kojima. Hip lock takeover nicely done. But you don't spend this long in the sport unless you know how to compete through high pressure and immense pain. And Kojima is feeling good and hopefully not looking forward to the uh, post-show bread feast because there is so much that could happen in this matchup. Look at play spoiler and Tito. Look at the size of this guy. Is he bigger than the last time we saw him? Yeah, he's a wrecking ball. He's a freight train. Tito running over Kojima. They went shoulder to shoulder. Tito got the best of it. You're not going to be able to take Tito off his feet. And there he shows the strength of that snapping suplex. And uh, Kojima gets his shoulder up. Certainly we've talked about uh, Tito's uh, allegiances in Japan. TMDK with Zack Sabre Jr., Nichols and Haste. And 
Fujita, who we saw on the oh, recent that's War the Chamber who's who Premium of Japan. Live event. Yeah, we saw Fujita on the Premium Live event of War Chamber. And Tito, you know, is somebody who, you know, took Matt Riddle to the limit in that New Japan Pro Wrestling Television Championship match, 15 minute time limit. And on another day, may have been another result. But here, Tito looking to make good on his title opportunity tonight as Kojima fires away. Rapid fire in the corner. Kojima known for these chops. You can see him turning his fingers into that claw configuration. Tito took the worst of that. It might have been 20 or 30 chops in a row. And follows through in the corner. Tito in a bad way now. Mark of a veteran of Kojima take the challenger out of his element and that was a mistake by kojima all due respect as tito with a slam to the floor that may have been the fighting spirit of kojima talking a little louder than his fight strategy that's a good point and tito's going to take advantage now tito kicking the champion while he's down we talked about the knee problems just getting to a standing position to a base position has got to be challenging with that much pain going through your knee the physicality of this fight makes me think back to Kojima and Minoru Suzuki from Intimidation Games. Yes. One of the greatest MLW World title fights we've seen. Oh! And Tito hits that combo. You know Kojima still feeling the effects of Suzuki. Tito looking to exploit that. German suplex near fall. And Tito pressing the advantage, not wasting any time, not thinking about what's next. Tito just feels it, and he does it. Tito's going to do something crazy here. He's going for the top turnbuckle. Kojima pretty far away in terms of ring position. Beautiful frog splash by Tito. Bad dude, and with a cover. Oh, I thought Tito had got all of that splash. That very easily could have been a new world champion. Kojima. How finds crazy a way would out. it be, partner, to see Tito walk away with the, cha the championship tonight? Imagine Selena's reaction as Kojima drops Tito with a DDT. Imagine Selena heading into Chicago May 11th as Tekka Lucha controlling the MLW wow. World title. That'll change the power dynamics between her and Cesar in a massive way. And there's the cozy cutter. Tito is down. Is he out? That all do no. Credit to Tito. Certainly, you got to look at Tito as maybe Selena's most important signing in the past several months. I couldn't agree more. Tito, an absolute monster. But I mean, can he survive? He oh, Larry, that's a counter. Tito packs such a heavy punch. Drives down with the F5. Is that enough? Hook the leg. And an ear fall. That was about as close as it gets there, Joe. Tito's bringing out the big guns. And you see at the bottom of your screen, Okumura. The corner man, longtime friend of Kojima, cheering on. Oh, Standing style, Tito is out. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Hulk and still MLW World Heavyweight Champion, Satoshi Kojima. What a win for Satoshi Kojima over. done tonight, but what a match that was. Kojima just better tonight. Still champion. Our bet online replay shows you the fighting spirit of Satoshi Kojima, the cozy cutter, and the lariat. Still your MLW world champion. Kojima, far less than 100% physically, but the heart is willing this man on in the title reign he waited 20 years to reprise. Contras hacked the feed. Contras hacked the feed again. That's Jamie Boy Smith Jr. We saw Richard Holloway targeted earlier tonight. It's Contra pursuing the World Titan Federation. No one is safe. Oh, Kruger. Kruger just knocked out Jamie Boy Smith Jr. with one shot. Well, the level of danger will only increase as you can see our crew has already begun to assemble the daunting, intimidating war chamber.
Ricky Shane Page rebuilt the calling in his image, but when Akira refused to answer Ricky's calling, he set out to do things the Akira way. And with that created a rift that led to humiliation, contempt, and bloodshed. The only way to settle this rivalry is the most violent match in Major League Wrestling. It's Akira's Death Fighters versus Ricky Shane Page's calling. War Chamber is next. Breaking news, fans, this just in. We have followed throughout the broadcast Contra Unit's decimation of the World Titan Federation, Richard Holiday, Davey Boy Smith Jr. We have just received word Tom Lawler has also been targeted. Unfortunately, Tom has been rushed to the hospital. He's currently in ICU. League officials understandably very concerned about Tom's well-being. We don't know the status of the World Tag Team Champions right now. We invite everyone to follow MLW.com and our social media as we learn more in the days ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, the time is now. It is. Sammy a degenerate and showing you right there he spits right on Chris it's, you can see the spit on his shoulder still and that's a man that oh, Callahan would have once upon a time fought alongside in any surrounding they used to say Ohio versus everything they used to say Ohio is for killers but now oh, oh geez, God. Jake Chris into the steel the door popped over with the force and keep in mind Christian it's submission 
submission, surrender, or pinfall, and the match does not officially start till all eight are in. Jake is not eliminated. This match is not over. The War Chamber cage is supposed to contain the fighters in this match, and it's already failing to do so. This violence oh. spilling out to the outside. Jake Chris has been lacerated on the steel of that chamber door. Sammy's spitting everywhere he goes. And when you got a, a, a structure like the war chamber, there's, there's little steel barbs and jagged edges and pieces that can become embedded into your back, your body, your head. What? Not to mention the top is draped with yeah. barbed wire. There's weapons strewn around the ring. I think Jake Chris caught one of those jagged edges on the way through the door. And so, He's not going to use the cage. Oh, my God. For the second time, I think Sammy was hoping to find the same aim he did the first time and open that cut wider. Jake Chris losing a lot of blood, just mere feet from our broadcast position. And Sammy going to drive that right hand into the bloody head of Chris. We talked about how good Chris has been doing, how far he's come in his life in recent months. Sammy looking to take it all away. Imagine wearing the blood of your family on your hand like it's a, a trophy. Oh, I know they're not blood related, but they've traveled so many thousands of miles for so many years. Sometimes you choose your family. Chris and Sammy chose each other, but now they want nothing to do with each other. I can think we're only a couple minutes away from the next part since we've been yeah, entering. Oh. This match, we passed that halfway point of the first stage, which is the only stage, five minutes in length. Jake Crist hit hip first into those solid heavy steel stairs. And now that the damage is done, Sammy looking to entrap Jake Crist. And perhaps it goes from back to worse. Sammy certainly, the sociopathy in his eyes. The, he has no empathy for his opponents. He, he seems to just run on violence like like a car runs on gasoline. Imagine the sinister ideas that go through Sammy Callahan's mind in an environment like this. I don't want to go to a dark place like that. Is that a fork? Oh, it is. Sammy Callahan maybe thinking a little about Doodle the Butcher. Sammy's going straight for Chris with that fork, who's already bleeding profusely. Sammy jabbing that fork right in the forehead. Driving it violently. And raking it across the forehead. Not in the neck. Oh. Right by the carotid artery. Callahan is trying to open up Jake Crist anywhere and everywhere he can. He spit in the air and caught it in his mouth. That's talented, this quite man, frankly. This man is reprehensible. He is talented in his ways of of human torture and, and pain threshold. Look at that, he's gonna attack the, the leg of Jay Chris with a chair. It's smart because Chris moves so fast around the ring. If you could take out a base. My God, they hit his ankle. They hit his ankle, chair on chair. And you, you, you're right, Christian. The way Jay Chris moves, the way he flies, that's his advantage. And Sammy may have just eliminated it. Sammy in his element with a former best friend of his could have a broken ankle and now he's just got barbed wire. I'm not sure if Sammy's uh, lucking into these weapons or if he planted them there earlier, but by any degree, Sammy does not need to be asked twice to use his surroundings to sinister me. Jake Chris slam on the barbed wire. All oh, that is sadistic. There were 
were three of them that had to be a thousand pounds combined assaulting the Death Fighter. And just like that, the advantage that Akira and Chris had, had, had won is eliminated. Is that a signed picture from one of our wrestlers? Well, yeah, to Sammy with Oh, we've Long. seen this before, Joe. We've seen Sammy attack. Nothing violently with hatred and venom. I, I saw Jake Crest is just a bloody mess. And if he's going to do what I think he's going to do with that paper, I might want to send the kids to look away for a second. Or maybe about 20 minutes or so. Because it's going to get worse oh, no. before it gets better. Oh, no. No. That no, no, no. spot between the fingers. Oh. Yeah, that makes it cringe. And Sammy, almost a euphoric pleasure on his face. Sammy's having a laugh while Jake Crist is in bad shape. And now, no, 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 no. Oh, his mouth. And the next entrant reps the calling. Ladies and gentlemen, the next entrant for the calling, Akira in, keep in mind Akira was the insubordinate, the one that didn't sign up to side with Ricky Shane Page, who he called a false prophet, a narcissist, someone leading in bad faith. And look at this, Shane Page able to enter the ring before Akira does. With Sammy holding the rope. This, this isn't the, the rules of this match. It's not going to the rules. Well, the colleagues never given a damn about rules. Make a rule, they'll try to break it. Ricky Shane Page is always against the grain. And now, gonna punish Jake Crist for daring oppose him. Punish Akira for daring defy oh him. My God, look oh, at Akira's that. a mess. And Callahan marking that door in Jake Crist's blood. Sadistic is Callahan, just as sadistic as this war chamber structure. Oh, and Crist, keep in mind the calling how is he fighting back like this? I mean, he's lost a lot of blood the only, during this fight. The only men that have stood up to them. Oh! oh wait. A malfunction there as RSP hits Sammy by accident. And what Chris counters? Jake Chris the stutter. Here's Akira and Page through the door. As Tampa Bay gets to their feet in support of Akira, we thought he might be out. Profusely, but he was able to get back in. Akira with that rebelliousness. And we're seconds away from our fifth entrance. Ladies and gentlemen, the next entrance into the war chamber. And here's maybe the only man that voluntarily stepped up to fight the calling. Time and time again. Anybody he sees in the ring coming in like a house of fire. He's going straight for a table. I tell you what, Jimmy Lloyd loves his violence. Jimmy Lloyd's a different boy. He's not like everybody else. Jimmy Lloyd's right at home inside the war chamber. And this was a pivotal need for uh, the response for the Death Fighters to get back in the game here after Paige and Callahan had manipulated so much of these rules. You hear the support of Tampa Bay for Jimmy Lloyd, but he gets thrown into that structure. Couldn't the save. War Chamber shaking back and forth. All the support might as well be a mile away. It can't save Lloyd. Oh, Paige missed Akira, and Akira everybody. Akira fucking the system, just as he did in the calling. Akira, a bloody mess, but elusive, and now able to answer with a steel chair, taking out both RSP and Sammy. Screw you, I won't do what you tell me. That's what led to the end of Akira in the calling, and it's what's leading to Akira rebounding now. Keep in 
Minor Kira had his dignity, his masculinity taken when he was tied to the rope and had his head shaved in front of the world. Akira's not forgotten about that. But now, the two-minute period has expired. Ladies and gentlemen, the third entrance for the calling, Cannonball. 400 pounds and not coming empty-handed. We saw Cannonball earlier in this fight. Again, the match hasn't officially started yet, but earlier in the fight, we saw Cannonball come out and now he's back. You can almost see a sadistic smile under that mask. He knows he did damage. He's coming to do more. Look who was the first to meet him. It was Akira. A tiger driver. Lloyd got planted on his head. All that weight of Lloyd works against him. Man, Akira is ready to. Look how bloody Akira is, yeah. partner. He's gushing blood. I mean, look, the heart's willing to. Is the body willing to stand on his own and, and fight his oppressors? Sammy offering Cannonball at bar oh He's just wrapping it around. Yeah. Not handing it to him. He's offering to turn Cannonball into a weapon. As if he wasn't enough of one to begin with. Oh. It's a weapon of mass destruction in the war chamber. Imagine just those, those barbs going into the body of Cannonball. And he doesn't even feel it. Cannonball's going up. I no. don't know if that turnbuckle can hold his weight. Shane Page can drive a lost man to do. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the next entry to the war and carnage and bloodletting everywhere. I notice Raven is using the bottom of that trash can, the most reinforced part. RSP might be there. out. And now, the final member of the calling. Doctor of Violence. 
And he's got a prescription for pain for Akira and anyone else that didn't tow the calling line but Raven from behind. And there's nobody, Christian, who can use a weapon more expertly than the man from the Bowery, Raven. Raven delivering that shot to the head of Dr. Cornwallis as now we focus in on Sammy. Keep in mind, Christian, all eight men have entered. The match is officially underway. It's submission, surrender, or pinball to end this. Sammy and Jimmy Lloyd. Jimmy Lloyd, a bloody mess. Sammy! Ah, an exploder! Right on that chair. And he had a bad landing. And for the cover, but the referee's far. The referee has to get towards the position of ring number two. But so much action for him to keep up with. He can barely see the pinfall attempt in ring two. He's in ring one right now. Well, there's about 700 pounds of humanity blocking his way. But right now, bottom line, Sammy and Ricky Shane Page want to inflict even more damage. Look out! Page just busted open, Joe. Akira nearly through the door. That chain went flying. And Akira looking to battle back. Akira's lost a ton of blood. So much of it comes from the sinister mind of Raven. But you don't have to ask anybody in this matchup twice. It's what Akira has dreamed of for four or five months. It's what Raven has sat back and calculatedly prepared. We got so many people hurt out here. There's just so much blood and violence taking place in this ring. We promised Florida you'd see blood and guts. I mean, this War Chamber match has delivered. What, what the hell? Jimmy Lloyd, Jimmy Lloyd suplexed to a door wrapped in barbed wire. And this sidebar between RSP and Sammy getting their strategy in order, trying to find a way, the match is official now, trying to find a way to put it away, get the victory for their team. Are they trying to isolate Akira, who was the catalyst to so much of this? And Sammy just broke through the chain that was keeping that door shut. And I don't want to know. Yeah, that's bad happening. news for all of us ringside. If 
if this cage couldn't contain Sammy. Sammy directed traffic, and notice the focus has strictly gone to Akira, who just had his forehead drilled into those tacks. His hand in that door to Cornwallis. The, the calling blames Akira for all of their pitfalls, for all of their shortcomings. Akira didn't follow his calling. Akira didn't trust in Ricky Shane Page. He trusted in Raven. And for being an independent thinker and being his own man, the calling looked to excommunicate Akira from pro wrestling as a whole. Ricky Shane Page lifting that table, setting it up, and Sammy just throwing more. Now it's a door in the ring. What, what the hell are they doing? Two chairs on top of a table. And there's no one that's gonna stop them. All the Death Fighters are hurt, the door, oh What is the structure that they're building? They're putting a second layer. Oh my God, what? Uh, what sinister? The minds of these men is bewildering to anybody. Fort Wallace is fighting Brady. Violently. He just bit the man's flesh to Fort Wallace. Dr. Cornwallis doing a checkup on Raven. And as, as Raven is neutralized, they've got Akira. Ricky Shane Page with Sammy Callahan. You can see the tack sticking out the back. Putting an end to the Akira problem, but the double knee counters missed. Oh, Akira said the calling played all of their cards, but Akira had one card left to play. and looks to end Akira. Akira out of the way. That would have crushed Akira, but he was elusive, able to move out of the way. Akira DDT in the center of the ring. Ricky Shane Page, you just felt the Raven effect from the one man that never stopped trusting in Raven and that kendo stick into the mouth, torturing the human slaughterhouse. Will RSP tap out? Did Akira do enough to earn a submission? Oh, barbed wire! Akira just leveled up! Barbed wire in the mouth! Piercing the skin of Pace! That's it! That's it! There's no the Akira! has exercised demons. He has liberated his mind, body, and soul from what the calling had attempted to do to systematically destroy him. And with three somewhat unlikely allies, Akira found his band of brothers and stands tall, a victor in war. Our bent on.
wrestling and follow the Akira way. Akira never compromised his ideals. He never conformed to what he didn't believe in. He and now, fucking W! He once was lost and now is found. Akira stands tall his own way. And perhaps Akira never reaches these heights. Oh! 